What's going on guys? Geosnow right here. So in today's video we're going to analyze iOS 9.3.5 jailbreak by Brando from GitHub and we're going to see whether it's going to be real or not and we're going to analyze what it contains. So let's go ahead. For those of you who do not remember, please watch the video from the description down below in which I presented this jailbreak um, or allegedly a jailbreak. And he says in here that it's a 32-bit device only, iOS 9.3.5 jailbreak, and the exploit is not yet included, but he said in the FAQ page he posted a couple of days ago, he's going to release it tomorrow on March the 9th, so you should stay updated. And um, he's going to actually post the beta 4 that contains the exploit. Well, we're going to see tomorrow, but I'm going to show you why I'm very skeptical about this jailbreak at this point. So, um... I've been going back and forth with another iOS uh, researcher, iOS developer here on Twitter, iTrix, you can go ahead and follow him, and he has been working with another user, iOS user, on, um, on Twitter, and he found out that Brando has a channel actually in here, and he posted a video on iOS 9.3.5 uh, jailbreak demo, so iTrix shared this video uh, with me 15 hours ago, so I have a lot of time to check it. Alright, so in this video at some point, this guy, Brando, uses the uh, uname a command as any other jailbreaker uses when he demos his jailbreak, but you can see from the printout that his iPod is actually posting the kernel version to be 15.0.0. This is not iOS 9.3.5 kernel, this is iOS 9.2 or 9.2 beta 4 kernel. I'm going to go ahead and here and check. Uh, you can see iOS 9.2 and 9.2 beta 4 has the Darwin kernel version 15.0, as in his video. But if you go here to iOS 9.3.5 down below, the kernel version is Darwin kernel version 15.6.0. So definitely different. So what I think he did in this video is he changed the, um, the build manifest, the plist, uh, with the version of the device to make it look like iOS 9.3.5, but he didn't know he didn't know how to actually change the kernel in order to show a different value, and the kernel remained the iOS 9.2 one, and probably he didn't even notice that, and that's why it's in his video, and this of course shows a a lot of lack. In so um. Going ahead to the project, it was also posted here on Reddit, on Reddit jailbreak, but it was later removed, probably due to the hate, and I can um, imagine that. And a lot of people were complaining it's fake because the exploit is not present. Well, I'm not complaining about the exploit being not present yet, because he said he's going to release it tomorrow, but I'm actually complaining about the fact that he uses the kernel of the iOS 9.2, which hints the fact that he was running iOS 9.2 and not 9.3.5, and iOS 9.2 definitely has a jailbreak. But I decided to download this project and open it on my computer and hope that the computer is not going to explode. So um, going ahead in here, you can see I added some constraints to him, because uh, I wanted to... Um, to show him how to actually do this properly, because this project didn't even have the constraints. I'm going to undo everything I did so that I can show you what it was all about, right? So, okay. So this was the original uh, file and he created two different storyboards for two different screen sizes, being it the iPad and the iPhone which definitely shows a lack of iOS skills. Normally, Brandon, if you're watching this video in Xcode, you can select everything from your um, storyboard and then add a couple of constraints in here. You can reset the um, suggestion, suggested um, constraints and it will create a file in here. And now if you use, for example, this square in here, you can select the alignment, you can select the aspect ratio, you can um, play with these as well and add the constraints. And this will definitely help you to do various things. And you do not need to have two different storyboards. That's very, very unprofessional for an iOS developer. So yeah, but the next thing I wanted to, to actually point out, why would you need three different betas for such a simple user interface? Three different betas, and I, I can do this in a half a minute. It's pretty damn simple, you just drag and drop a couple of elements from here. For example, you go ahead in here, label, take the label, put it in here, rename it, resize it, do whatever you want. Cat napping, uh, for example, and you put it wherever you want. So it's not that hard to do this interface, why you need three betas for that? But anyways, going to the code, I know the exploit is not present, it's going to be released tomorrow, allegedly. 
but the actual code behind the user interface is pretty damn simple. It's only a string to three, three different strings. The first one says exploit installed, the second one please reboot your device and I say it in here, I comment this, a jailbreak should be able to respring reboot by itself, Brandon. Remember that. You can call POSIX, you can call, I don't know, you can kill all the applications, you can kill Springboard and achieve a respring effect, but you don't have to call the user to actually reboot the device, I don't know. Anyways, and after that it's just a uh, an alert uh, message with probably message being this one from here because it calls this uh, variable from here. So not pretty much of a jailbreak from what I can see. Of course, um, it shouldn't be very, very complicated, the user interface itself, the exploit is, uh, is more important, but it's not present in here. But anyways, this doesn't really look to me like a real, uh, like a real developer, because he, he lacks very important skills of an iOS developer, let alone an iOS jailbreaker. So I'm going to see up until tomorrow, if he does release something I'm going to show you, I'm going to make a video. But also, as you can see, he has the IPA for Beta 3, with, only with that user interface. But do not, do not use the IPAs yet. Even if he, he does release the exploit tomorrow and he keeps his word, do not try the IPAs he posts up until I tell you it is actually not malware because it's pretty, pretty um, sketchy at this point. So yeah, I'm pretty sad to say this and yeah, I definitely wanted to, to see this as a jailbreak, but I think our only um, solution for a jailbreak would be the jailbreak that will be presented at Black Hat this March, so this month, um, and it will be by Fried Apple team. They are real developers and they do not make these kind of fakery style things. So yeah, we're going to wait up until tomorrow. It's only one day left, so I can hold my patience. But till the next time, do not forget, stay secure, do not fall for the fakes, and peace out.